Hi guys, here we are, MMA UK News, obviously myself, Stoomboy as always, uh, usually for the MMA UK BJJ show, which we were supposed to be talking about MMA tonight, um, but obviously now it's uh, grappling we're going to be talking about, so um, so we're talking about Evolution of Combat 11, going to be at the Mary Hill Community Halls, that's next Saturday the 19th of February, now uh, doors I believe open around about 5 o'clock, uh, our first fight's around about 5 uh, so make sure you guys are in the building as quickly as possible. Get your seats and so on. Now, tickets are all sold out. The only place you can get tickets directly from the fighters. So obviously, check with your chosen fighter and make sure you get the tickets from them. Uh, there is a pay-per-view for this. So just jump onto the Evolution of Combat Facebook page. It will then take you through to... Or It'll give you an option to go through to uh, live MMA. Price for that, $9.99. So, fantastic price for some of the matchups you're going to get. Grappling, Muay Thai, kickboxing, and obviously rounding the night off with MMA. So, guest tonight, Fraser Hirsch of Results, Jim in Forfer. Okay, now, this is a special one because normally you only get one interviewer for <laughs> the, the people. But obviously, Fraser's special. So Fraser gets the queen of MMA media, Katie Hunter, <laughs> um, and obviously the king of grappling media, Stoom Boy. So uh, Fraser's going to be up against Lee Emsley in a grappling match. So it was an MMA match. Obviously, opponent had to pull out. So all the best to Tom Lamb uh, with everything that's going on with him. So it's going to be a grappling match. So Fraser, that's an absolute pleasure, as always, to speak to you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure and feel privileged, you know. I've got I'm getting two, interviewed by two of you, you know, rather than just the one. So, uh, nah, it's, nah. it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Always a pleasure. I know we've spoke a good few times, we see each other at competitions and stuff like that as well. So, uh, yeah. it's always a pleasure to speak to you, as always, buddy. It yeah, didn't yeah. take long for uh, Peter to get in on the action, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I see that, yeah. So Peter, Peter Knox uh, saying, "I thought Stoom was the queen." Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> Peter's only saying that because obviously he, he doesn't know anything about grappling. All right. So <laughs> Peter, you stick to MMA. All right. Um, so definitely stick to MMA. Um, so yeah. So obviously we've got a few questions for you. Obviously a few things to talk about. So I know Katie's got a few things she wants to talk about as well in regards to MMA and so on. Well, yeah. I, I actually feel really uh, lucky, Fraser, that, well, not lucky that we didn't see each other, but lucky we didn't do the interview uh, <laughs> at UFL as we were intending, because it yeah. would have been about a, a fight that is now not going to happen. But you must be so chuffed to still be on the card and to, like yeah. you said, all that effort that you've put into training and just be able to put on a show still. Yeah, yeah definitely. I was, you know, I got, obviously... I thought, when was on? I thought just before the first lockdown. Uh, so that would be back in 20, March 2020. And mm. then I was hoping, you know, once to get the lockdowns out of the way, try and get fights. And then uh, a lot of shows weren't running because they couldn't have crowds so, and stuff. So uh, I was trying to get back into training. Then the gyms weren't open and stuff like that. So it was a total nightmare. And I had loads of work on. You know, the work just kept piling in and piling in. And it's like, well, what's the point in trying? You can't get to the gym. You can't train properly. So I kind of shifted my focus a wee bit away from that to my business. Um, yeah. And then beginning of the year there, I got a message from Dan saying you want to fight. And it was like, yeah, just give me two seconds and he check. And I knew they were going to say, yeah, just, just go. I never checked the guy out. I never did nothing. I was like, I want to fight. So it was like the 2nd of January. Uh, I just came out. I just came out with training, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." I just, you know, out of respect, message my coaches, and they were like, "Yeah, just if you're happy to go ahead, just, just, just get it done." So from then, I just got my finger out my arse, basically. I think it was way up at 97 kilos, um, and I was like, "Right, let's do this. Get the fight on the go." You know, and I've been training hard for it, and then obviously, the it's not happening. It's not going to happen. So it's just a bit of a shame, like, you know. Yeah. So I'm not getting any younger. Um, you know, obviously two years of COVID and stuff, you know, 38 this year. So, you know, the, the, you know, there's not that many years left to, yeah. to, to try and get there, you know. And I think the goal is definitely a few more uh, amateur fights and I've got to have a pro fight. 
You know what I mean? It's one of those ones. You can't. You've got to have done all, had all those. I've had nine amateur fights already. A few more. Yeah. And then have a pro fight just to say, do you know what? I've done it. You know, def- I've had a pro fight. Like. Yeah, I think that's an amazing target to set your sights on. So what's the, what's the plan after this? Have you got any shows that you, you know, would like to be on? Have you tried to plan the rest of the year thinking how many times you'd like to fight? I'll fight every week if I can. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it's one of those ones. I was going to get this first one out of the way. I think I've got my name down for the Forza show. Um, and I actually messaged Ray, Ray Thompson, Almighty, because I was yep. matched on one of his shows. Um, it would have been during lock, you know, and then I was matched, and then obviously the lockdown came, so it didn't happen. So I threw my name back in the heart there. So I think they're actually quite close together, so it'll probably be one or the other just see what happens you know what i mean just see i'm ho- hopefully there should be a few more shows on the go and they can get 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 fighting on them but three to four times this year for stay injury free is quite reasonable you know what i mean i think that's it's doable as well you know yeah definitely there seem to be more and more shows all the time now don't there yeah yeah there is i don't know there doesn't seem to be that many up here up in scotland there's not as many as there, there was but Hopefully these the, the promoters will be back promoting and getting things up and running, you know, once this yeah. all this COVID nonsense is gone. Well you'll have to come south of the border, Fraser. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm game. Yeah, I'll go anywhere. It doesn't bother me, you know. <laughs> all the same. I mean, there's gonna be there's gonna be a few shows coming up in Scotland. Obviously, we'll have uh, as you mentioned, we've got Evolution of Combat, we've got uh, Forza coming up, Battle Arena. Obviously, oh. potentially going to have a, a show in Scotland at some point this year. Um, so there's going to be a few shows. There'll be a few shows definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, which obviously, I mean, everybody knows you in Scotland, Fraser. So, um, so I'm pretty sure you're going to be a name that's going to be on everybody's list for every event in Scotland. Hopefully, hopefully. If not, I'll put it on. I'll put I'll put my I'll put my own name on the list anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And talk to us about your opponent um, for uh, for Evolution of Combat now, Lee Emsley. You mentioned him earlier when you said the fight, uh, the match was supposed to happen before. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was uh, it the Battle well, of the Beards, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we get to see it now. Like, t- tell us how you think it's going to go, and tell us what you think about him as a grappler. I don't know. I've not, uh, it's one of those ones. We've, we've both been to each other's gyms, but when we've went. I've not been at my gym, he's not been at his gym, you know, so no, obviously no way through the MMA circuit and that, um, but I've never actually seen him grapple, but, you know, for, for the guys that, um, some of the, my teammates have grappled with him and other guys that I know have grappled with him, you know, says he's he's a strong guy and, he, you know, he's half decent, so it's going to, it's going to be a good match, you know, um, I don't know how it's going to go, I'm hoping I'm going to win, hoping I'm going to beat him, but it's just, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes on the night, you know. He's like I'm you as well. I'm going out he's, there to win, put it that way, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's been in the sure, game I'm, forever, the same as yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure Lee will be, be the same, you know. He, 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 absolute gentleman, you know. Like I said, we were matched on SGI. Unfortunately, I had to pull out. Um, I had the death in the family. My sister died the week before. So it was just, just wasn't in any kind of mental mental state to, to, to compete and then we ended up getting COVID I think it was a, a day or two days before it anyway so it would, it would have been called off um, so on the way to training on Thursday I was like fuck this you know I says I put all this hard work in I've been training twice a day beginning of January I says you know even if I was to get a grappling match because I know you've always in the combat do grappling I was like you know there's only one man there to, to, to drop a message to so I dropped Lee a message and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm game. You know, total gentleman, he was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, so happy in that sense. You know, I would rather be fighting MMA than grappling, yeah. but it's, it's, it's better than nothing, you know. Absolutely. And that's just so the spirit of martial arts as well, isn't it? That you can message him and, and him reply and say, yeah, I'd love to. Like, it just gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, like, I can't thank the guy enough. You know, he could have turned around and says no. But, you know, he was like, let's do it. You know, so total gentleman. Yeah. Well, why the hell not as well? He gets to fight on a great show too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. And Stoom, you you know him well, right? 
Yeah, well, I know, I know Fraser. I know both guys. Um, obviously, Fraser um, is one of these guys. As I said, for me, whenever I see Fraser uh, Grapman, I think the last time I saw you was um, the Gi competition. Just yeah, it was Christmas. a Gi competition in back in November, I think it was in Glasgow. Yeah, so obviously won gold at that one, and then yeah. obviously Lee. Um, obviously, I know Lee. I know the people Lee trains with. Obviously, he trains over at Braveheart, trains at Goliath, and stuff like that. So, so both guys coming with fantastic experience. As I say, they've been in the game forever. Um, still blue belts. I don't know why you guys are both still blue belts. Um, we'll certainly, <laughs> so we'll that's certainly, the should... murder people at competitions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. But yeah, Lee, Lee's a strong guy. As he, he's, he's a technical guy as well. As you said, he, he moves about quite well. Um, and I say Ray, Fraser's wrestling is unbelievable. Um, as he just seems to keep going and going and going, which. Is absolutely awesome to see. I mean, you talk about being 38 year old. Uh, I think when I seen you, it must have been about what 35, maybe. Um, and you had the gas tank of a guy who was 20 year old. Yeah, you know I, I mean? still think I'm 25, honestly. I still <laughs> think I'm 25, and you know, I'm just going to keep thinking that, keep thinking that. Yeah, 25, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So it's going to be a good matchup. This, this is going to be a, as I said, it's one of the. And again, you're in you're in amongst some grapplers like you talk about Shawnee Stewart, Ash Williams, John Malfin, Kev McAloon, uh just some to name big a names few. there. Some some really good good grapplers there, you know. There yeah. Is. yeah. So it's uh, definitely a, a great matchup to add to the already great grappling matchups that are on Evolution mm-hmm. of Combat. So yeah. Um so it will be brilliant. And then well, obviously we do have some a lot of questions coming in, Fraser. You're a popular guy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Arn James East of MMA UK, just saying the Scottish Clay Guida. <laughs> <laughs> the same gas tank, yeah, Arn, definitely the same gas tank. So, um, Arn's also saying, what was your regime, your training regime during lockdown? I was pretty shit, to be honest. You know, at the start, I did start doing workouts at, at home and stuff, and it just wasn't the same, you know, and... I'd, I'd fought the week before and it was like, all right, okay, take a few weeks off. And yeah. then a few weeks led into months. And then, believe it or not, when, when we did start back training and stuff and we were sneaking into the gyms, police, people were throwing the post on us because they seen you going into the gym and shit like that. And it was like, you know, wild. So it was just, you know, easier not to train, you know, and then trying to train outdoors was just difficult you know it was really yeah. just quite difficult and just there was more hassle than it was worth so like it says a, a ballooned up to about 97 kilos just being fat and you know got fat and being lazy kind of thing um but yeah it was pretty shit to be honest did you ever try and, them solo drills i tried them for like the first week of lockdown oh my god how boring is that yeah it's shit <laughs> isn't it you know because you're normally in the gym with 10 or 15 guys and you know and uh and the banter's going and, and, and whatnot to, to be there on your own, it's just shit, you know, nobody there to push you and, and stuff. So it's yeah, it's pretty crap. I hate and you've done a you done a lot of things as well with the with the family. Yeah, um, do you know what? But in that sense it was it was really great. I spent some really, really quality time with my girls and my wife. And you know, it was it was good. It was really good in that sense. You know, it's probably time I wouldn't have wouldn't have spent with them. Because um, it'd be all grafting and stuff, you know. But no, it was really good. It was, was in that sense, it was great, you know. Are the girls still bullying you? Oh, always, you know. <laughs> Outnumbered. Stay, stay in a, the, the house is. Uh, I'm the only male in the house, you know. There's the three girls and my wife, and even my dog, even Donny, man, he's been castrated, so he's not a proper male either, you know. <laughs> 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 brilliant, brilliant. Um, and then Peter Knox just said, "Yeah, there is a lack of Scottish shows this year." Um, I mean, it's obviously it's only February. Um, yeah, obviously shows will come. Shows will come. So there are a lot of these shows as well. I mean, you know yourself. They'll be waiting to see what other people are doing. Like, how did Evolution of Combat get on? How did Forza get on with all the restrictions and stuff? Because because obviously, like so the Evolution of Combat being in the Mary Hill Community Hall, it's a council-run building, so there is still track and trace yeah, issues be, and things like that. So it's going to be quite strict, isn't it? Yeah. So I think a lot of these shows will wait to see how these other shows did 
and then they'll obviously put shows in place. So, yeah. but I'm hoping so. I hope. I, I do hope so. Yeah. So, um, I'm sure, you get you know, like so the, the on tops and uh, other combats and stuff back. You know, yeah, yeah, would be good. Big shows, you know, well run, well organised. You know, so it would be great to see them back. Yeah, and how do you go from obviously training, getting ready for an MMA fight? And putting all that preparation into an MMA fight, and then now having to then change focus, and then now focus on a purely grappling fight. I don't know. It's, you know, it was a bit of a downer, but it's one of those ones that's better than nothing. And you know, just keep training. Obviously, training MMA, training grappling in the gi, out the gi, kickboxing. You know, so it's just the case. All right, it's just an MMA fight with no punches and kicks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, that that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I look at it, you know, and it's yeah, it is a bummer there's no an MMA fight, but hey, what can you do? Yeah, yeah. It would have been nah. even worse if all the training, you know, the five getting up at five twenty every morning and going to the gym was for nothing, you know. So yeah. in that sense it's like I say, it's 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 better than nothing. No, nah, definitely and then there is a few questions coming in, obviously, in regards to um, where are we? So they're talking about UFL. You were doing at UFL last yeah. week. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, Katie, you know as well. I mean, UFL was an absolute nightmare last week. <laughs> Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Knox actually said this about the the people gassing you up for going to the gym in lockdown, but it, it might have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean everybody's seen UFL. Everybody's seen it's been all over Facebook for the last week. So um, yeah, it was it was pretty well, you know, badly yeah. organised. You know, I, I really I really hope you know in the next few years that. There should be some kind of sanctions where there should be a, a, you know, a competent referee, competent timekeepers, competent judges, and uh, a doctor. You know, there was medics there, but you know, I, I reckon there should be a doctor at every one, every one of these events. You know, where something like that's mandatory. You know, in all shows. Yeah. And um, obviously, there was two guys from our gym fighting on it. When you seen it, you know, I said, "Oh, UFL are looking for fighters." And, this kind of burst out laughing. It was like, oh, that's so and so, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it was like everybody's kind of moaning about it, but everybody knew it was going to be a shit show, didn't they? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they, they were moaning about it, and it's like, oh, a shit show, this and that. It's like, so why did you support it, kind of thing? Obviously, we went down, two guys again just couldn't get fights, there wasn't any shows, and they got matched on the show, so it was like. Do we go? Do we not? It's like the guys are wanting to fight. So, but then you've yeah. got, you know, there was some big names on the show, you know. So it's like these yeah. big guys are got bigger names are going than us. So, so why not? But I think after the, 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 the you know, the last was it forty three unanswered strikes, like that's yeah. fucking murder. That's yeah. you know, like come on, you yeah. know, even the you, you had the guy the caught the. the, the the guy that was commentating, commentating yeah. him to stop the fight, like it was just wild. Yeah, that's what Peter Knox is saying. Time to clean up MMA. Got to be, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be, you know, it's one of those ones now. It's like, can't put any other fighters back in that show. Imagine amateur belt, you know, and 43. Okay, it was a professional belt, but even still, you know, it's yeah. 43 unanswered punches. That's just wild. So, you, yeah. you know, you couldn't have put any other guys back on that show, you know, yeah. after seeing that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Or, or, or if they, they clean up their act and they do, you know, have the things in place that, that should be in place. Yeah. It's one of them ones, I mean, you mentioned it there, that obviously you've got fighters that obviously the last couple of years, um, there's not been a lot of shows. Um, so, obviously, some fighters are saying, well, look, do I go on a show like that? Do I not go on a show like that? Am I going to get a fight? Am I not going to get a fight? So, do you know what I mean? So it's, well, that's, uh, that, that, that's where we were at. And the, and the two guys um, from the gym that fought on the show, you know, they, they were, one of them lost, one of them won. Fights were fine. They were quite evenly matched. Their opponents were evenly matched. 
and there wasn't any there wasn't any dramas with him, you know. Um, so in that sense, the, 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 it was fine. But you know, when you've got somebody that's refing fights that shouldn't be refing fights, you know. Yeah. It's kind of wild. Well, it, it's the most important job, isn't it? But I do get what you're you're saying when there's a lack of uh, shows in Scotland and people have been locked down for a couple of years and. You know, people like yourself who are thinking I've I've not got that many years left in my career. I, I want to no. get on some shows. It's really hard to turn down, I think, and and well, people forget that. You know, especially if you see other people on the show that you know, you think it can't be that bad. Um, but we, we, but we had, that, had actually we had actually been at one, um, one in Musselburgh, and it was was all right. You know what I mean? But it was it just wasn't what you're used to. You know what I mean? You're used to well organised, well run shows and uh, that, you know, it's like, come on, so what do you do? Yeah. It blew up on social media. I've, I've seen, seen everybody seen, that, seen you know. videos and do you know what I mean? It was posted about by a lot of big people in the UK MMA scene. Um mm. and yeah, I mean it I mean hopefully one day, yeah, it can get cleaned up. Um that's why I love jujitsu. We don't get to punch each other in the face. There's no controversy. There's no nothing at all. You're we just, just go in. To, you're just allowed to choke each other unconscious, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you get, up, you get up after it, you shake hands, give each other a hug, and then sit there for 10 minutes talking about how you choked me and stuff like yeah. that. So that, that's well, it, you know, the, you know, the MMA, The MMA guys are the same, you know what I mean? They're, some of them can be absolute killers, and, you know, but yeah. some of the nicest folk I've ever met, you know? Some yeah. of these guys are portrayed to be these big bad, you know, whatever. But a lot of them are really, not nah, majority of them are really nice blokes, you know. Yeah. And yeah, girls, definitely. guys and girls. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. 2022 is going to be a fantastic year for... I, I've been saying it to everybody, this is the year of combat sports. Because the last two years, we've been robbed... Um, and especially guys, the older guys. I'm an older guy, Fraser. Obviously, you're now. Uh, I'm only 25. Not, only 25. <laughs> well, only on 25. <laughs> but it means like, the, the older guys. I mean, anybody like 30 plus robbed to two years of of your life, basically. Yeah. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? So, um, so this year's going to be a good year for everybody, MMA and grappling alike. So we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. Um, so. For you then, anything else you want to add then, Kate? Anything else you've got that you want to ask, Fraser? Just, just I find it mental that you and Lee haven't rolled together before because, like, stalking both yeah. your Instagrams and you've trained at his facility and he's trained at yours is mad. And I think it's lovely that it gets to happen on a big show under the bright lights and, you know, it's saved for you the fact yeah. that, that you've done all that training and put all that work in already. So um, I'm well chuffed. But my question was about when you actually trained at Braveheart um, with Stevie Ray. And I wanted to know what you think of him now going to PFL and and uh, his chances next year. Yeah, well, year. Yeah. well, Stevie, great guy. I fought, I fought one of these guys a few years ago. can't remember, Sean, a few years ago. Um, you know, Great fighter. Um, when we were, I was over at Braveheart, I've been over a couple of times. I was over a couple of times, but the the, the last time there we were over um, sparring and that, and it was really good cracking facility. You know, really welcoming Stevie and these guys, really welcoming. Again, kind of know them from being at all the different shows and stuff. But yeah, good, some good good sparring matches and that. Yeah. And yeah, I, I hope he does really well. You know, it's great for Scottish MMA to see guys like that on the big stage. You know, it'd be, be better if there was more more guys on bigger stages, more guys in the UFC. But you know, as what it is, it's great to see that you know Scotland's represented on these on these big shows, big platforms. You know, yeah. and I, I really hope he yeah. does well. And, yeah, hope his knee holds out. Yeah, it's yeah. A lot of yeah. a lot of fights, isn't it, to get to that final? I just uh, yeah. I hope that the break has, has done him a load of good and, and he'll be in tip-top condition for this. Yeah, I see. Uh, I've got him on social media and stuff and he seems to be, you know, putting the work in and training and stuff. And So I'm sure he'll be ready for it, for, 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 for whatever, you know, he will be ready for it. Yeah, I'm mega excited for his comeback. 
Yeah, yeah. And then we've got um, a Scottish girl on the UFC card this weekend. Um, yeah. So do, how, how do you think? Yeah, that's right. And uh, I think I saw uh, uh, a message here asking if she'll retire Roxy. She definitely will retire Roxy. Yeah, because yeah, it's retirement last fight. fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do think she's the next big thing, and I could see her fighting Valentina in the not too distant future. What, what do you think? Yeah, well, I hope she does. You know, it would be brilliant again. It would be brilliant for Scottish MMA. You know, to 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 see them up there on that that big. Well, they're obviously on the big stage, but I think she'll win tonight. I think she will win tonight, and it would be great to see her. You know, fight Valentina. You know, I think it's still another few more fights yet. Yeah. But, you know, it would be great to see her fight her and beat her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I do reckon it could, I think for her, the perfect timing would be if it happens next year, the fight with Valentina all being mm -hmm. well. But just sometimes in that division, just due to a lack of contenders, people tend to get a bit rushed. And yeah, it'd, yeah. It'd be good yeah. if she could try was the, to... Who was it that fought her before and it was quite rushed? Uh, there's there's been a, a few of thought. them who think yeah, they're yeah. like the the next thing, and it just I would, I would just like to see her make the most of her chance, you yeah. know. And and she's got many many years ahead of her, and she's going to be quite incredible, I think. So I I would just like it to happen maybe towards the end of next year, but we'll see. I don't I don't think that division is deep enough for them to wait that long if she really puts yeah. on a show. So, well, hopefully, yeah. she maybe digs her heels in and says, oh, I'm not ready yet. And maybe gets another couple of fights in, you know. But yeah, it's one of those ones when you got offered it as a fighter, you're like, Yeah, yeah. I That's when you it. need can... good people around you, yeah. I think. Like Tom Aspinall's doing a really good job of like only fighting people just above, just above. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And obviously, he got offered this for London and would headline. So, that that's a few places above. But he's definitely been trying to put the brakes on. But like you say, it's hard as a fighter. You you want to fight totally. the best, you want, don't you? You want that big shiny belt, you know, or, you know, you want the title, yeah. you know. It's Peter I'm Knox saying, Casey, reckons after tonight, Casey will call out Jojo. That would be a fight, like, that would be a good fight. Um, apparently they have beef. I call oh, Peter. Wow. <laughs> They're both training out in Vegas now, I think. Um, Is that right? Uh, yeah, so it would, uh, I would actually go with O'Neill in that fight. Would you? I don't know if that's controversial, but I, I think she's there. I feel, I feel like Jojo, this might this might go down really badly with the Scottish <laughs> viewers. I feel like she plateaued a while back and I don't see her making massive improvements to her game. Mm -hmm. Um but sorry if I've uh, <laughs> been blackballed by the Scottish MMA community now. <laughs> but yeah, that'll be a good fight, Casey and Jojo. Um, yeah, be an awesome fight to see. I know that Jojo as well is one of these ones where, where we saw her in jiu-jitsu competitions, grappling competitions. So, um, and she was all right. She was decent. Do you know what I mean? She was really, really good. Ground game was all right. Um, and it worked for, obviously, the, some of the levels she got to in uh, martial arts uh, or in the UFC and things like that. So, um, But, yeah, awesome fight between the two. That would be an interesting one to see. Scotland versus Scotland. The UFC. So, yeah, it'd be good. That would be good. Yeah. MMA Pirate wants to know uh, who the next next Scottish fighter to be signed by the UFC is. I don't know. I reckon Chris Duncan can't be far off. Chris so Duncan, yeah. Shot. Like, especially going to Cage Warriors. Um, I, I, I think he's... He's not far off. He was he was unlucky with what happened to him in contenders, not necessarily just the fight, but the fact that his original opponent pulled out. He had to make weight again in yeah, that time. Yeah, like, twice in a week or something crazy. Yeah, just I don't think that's the best preparation. Um, mm, yeah. And obviously he was up against a guy who's already proven himself in the UFC as an absolute beast, um, which is not to say that he can't compete with him on another day. But um, yeah. I, I personally think he's going to do really, really well in Cage Warriors and he would be bouncing back 
pretty quick, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good, great to see Chris. You know, he just seems one of those, you know, he's been in the game a long time. He's just a hard working guy. You can just see that, you know, he grafts away and and uh, yeah, that would be brilliant to to see him in the UFC. So apart from your own matchup, who are you most looking forward to watching in EOC? I don't know. I can't remember. There's a well, I can't even remember what fights are on it. That's bad. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them come up in that. Eh? But um, well, you've got Clancy, Clancy, Sean Clancy. Yeah, yeah that's junior, it. I'm looking junior, forward yeah. to seeing him back again. And it seems yeah. like he's got a decent opponent as well. Yeah. I'm Leo. Yeah, I'm solid again. Another undefeated fighter. Um, uh, so yeah, I, listen, Arn's definitely going to come and bring it. Sean Clancy Jr. is f- unbelievable. Unbelievable to watch. He's, he's, um, he's just a young guy. He's what is he eight yeah. years old or something? It's Nineteen, scary, yeah. Like, yeah, nineteen year old. Eh? Yeah. So, um, and he's one that people are tipping for the top as well. So, yeah. obviously, he's what five and zero as an amateur. This will be what sixth fight as an amateur. Um, and yeah, obviously, goes on and win this. Then I don't know what they do. Where do they go with him? Does he maybe do another couple of fights at amateur, or did he look at maybe pushing him pro? Uh, but again, that'll be down to James Doolan. Obviously, they, yeah. they've got a, they've got a really really good plan for Sean. So mm. he's one that we will see um, definitely reaching the top. Um, yeah. Well, you don't get that many people to the UFC by accident, do you? So no. he knows what he's doing, James Doolan, for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I think yeah, but... Re- Re- is, is Reese McEwen no fighting on the show as well? He's always one to watch. He's always seems to be. Yeah, I mean, Reese. I think he was a, was going to be on the show. There's not a lot of talk about him at the moment, though. So um, no, I don't know if he was matched. He seems to be matched. Normally matched on the, the Ocean of Combats. Yeah. Mm. Um, so Reese is one as well. Again, Scotland's fuller. See some of the, the the young fighters that we've got, amateurs, and obviously the young pros and stuff like that. I mean, there's some awesome fighters coming through. Some absolutely top draw fighters, um, and they're tough guys. I mean, a lot of tough. Tough young guys out there. Yeah. And a lot of them come out at a higher level. <laughs> so yeah, it's high a place level to be, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just kind of, you know, I'd like to get down there and do a bit of training, but it's just, you know, it's like a two hour drive away and, you yeah. know, we're working everything and it's like, you know, maybe if I was 18, I'd be, I'd be down there, you know, more, you know, try and get down there and that. But it's, it's just a tough one, you know, it is a tough one. How yeah, old were you when you started training, Fraser? MMA, I think it was like 31, 30, 31. Yeah. I see so. the kids now doing it at like yeah, I know. starting so young and I'm just really jealous of them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you see them now, like where some of them would maybe be kickboxers or they'd be grapplers or whatever they would be and then they'd go into MMA. But now they're just it's just MMA. They've never done boxing or kickboxing or anything yeah. like that. So it's 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 scary because you know you've seen them now and in ten years time, five years time, what what kind of improvement are they going to make? It's just going to be crazy and you know it's it's great to see. Even there's some guys in our gym you think bloody hell man, you know you're going to be good. They're good just now, and you think fucking hell, wait a few more years they're going to be. Yeah, I know, you know that's really, really, really rising good. all the time. Yeah, and it's evolving as well, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's, yeah, it's, it's good to see, you know. Yeah. Peter Knox just saying Reese isn't matched up yet. Uh, not. He's not matched up at all. Um, so um, I don't think we'll see Reese on this one. Um, again, Reese is one of these ones where obviously they've got a plan for Reese. So um, Reese is going to do some big things as well. So oh, yeah, I can believe for... that. You know, he's one of our guys and yeah, he's, he's really good. Yeah. Peter Knox as well saying still time for Stoneboy to have an MMA fight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that ship's well and truly sailed. Um, <laughs> I know I was going to be doing an ultra MMA fight um, just before the lockdown. Um, I think I was going to be doing it. Then I got injured and then I couldn't do it at all. And then I think we were lining one up for about, what, April or May time, 2020. And then obviously lockdown came and completely ruined it. So, um, What's ultra MMA? Ultra MMA is like, um, no, the Wimp to Warrior. Type oh, thing. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, what they do is they, um, it's obviously amateur rules, um, yeah. and you basically do a, I think it's an eight week program with uh, Mark Connor up at the Grip House uh, or up Mark Connor Jiu Jitsu, um, 
and then it's all done for charity for cancer research. Um, so, and then what happens is obviously you do your eight week training, and then you get matched up with someone of a similar skill level to you. Yeah. Um, I remember going in, and I remember Paul McVeigh was there, and uh, he was in doing a kind of PT. And I've came, I've came walking in the door, and Paul's like, "Why are you here?" And I was like, "Because obviously I'm coming to do the old time MMA." He's like. Yeah, yeah, but you were like IBJJF British champion and, and stuff like that. So why, why are you here? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, obviously, I, I know a lot about, about jiu-jitsu, but I don't know anything about MMA. So, um, and he, so he was just laughing like, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here at all. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, something similar to the, the Winter Warrior stuff. So, And again, for a fantastic cause, Cancer Research. So, um, so yeah, it was something, obviously, a lot of it close to my heart. It's probably something I'm still going to do. As I said, it's I'm only forty. I'm, I'm only forty four. So there's still yeah. a, there's still a couple of years left in me before I. Some poor unsuspecting dude with no background in martial <laughs> arts. Well, do you know what? Get choked out. <laughs> when I, when I went in, there was guys who had they've got experience. Some had kickboxing experience. Some had boxing experience. Obviously, me coming in with jujitsu experience. So everybody had some sort of skill set. So when I went in thinking, and I remember saying to Mark Connor, saying, look, should I be here? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, it's so, but they would then match you up with someone of a similar skill value, so, yeah. uh, or skill level. So, but yeah, as I said, it's, it's an amateur fight. As I said, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to get a couple of punches in the face. Depends, so. depends who's running the show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Fair point. Boom, boy, to <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. So, um, but yeah, Peter Knox again is getting carried away here, or Aaron's getting carried away. <laughs> Stu versus Derek Lewis. Um, so, yeah, that's a shame on Derek Lewis. Do you know what I mean? So, remember, he's the. What did he say? He's the. He's the toughest blue belt in Texas. He so, says he doesn't work on him as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll. Like <laughs> uh, he's, he's not grappled with Stoomboy yet. So. He's, he's not tested way. that yet. Yeah, so he's not had that Stoomboy <laughs> top pressure. So, um, <laughs> but nah, I mean, I might, I might, I might, but I'd say it's not something I would ever do. I would have loved to have done it, like you said, Fraser, when the, when I was eighteen. Uh, but when I was eighteen, I mean. Even you, when you were 18, Dundee, there wasn't a lot to do. There wasn't a lot of stuff. I mean, there was boxing um, at the Dick McTaggart yeah. Centre and stuff like that. But well, the traditional martial arts, you know, and boxing, yeah. Yeah. boxing and stuff like Karate that. Karate and so all that. So. Just never, there, wasn't, there wasn't anything like MMA. And just, yeah. It is what it is, you know. I just yeah. feel lucky that I managed to get into it and get, get the quite decent, I feel quite a decent level. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, it's Decent level, yeah. Decent, all right level. Hey, I'm, ne I'm never going to be the best, and never going to be the greatest. But it's, you know, so there's goals there that I, I feel I've achieved a few of them. So, yeah. you know, and I, I look at some of the guys, the same age as me, 38, and you know, they've not done half of the half of the stuff, and they're not in good shape, and they don't train anymore, and stuff like that. So it's you know. Yeah, it's, well, you've it's got good. To put on those you know. pro gloves before you hang them up. Yeah, yeah, at least one. We've got to save one. Yeah, it's got, going to happen. Definitely oh. going to happen. Why not? Nah, we're buzzing. We're buzzing to see what you're going to do. I said, yeah. uh, it's quite funny. I was looking at your record, Fraser, right? So I don't know if you know this, but every fighter you've fought since 2018 have never fought again. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Retire so yeah, that's the, the, yeah, yeah. I think the the, the, the we could go back to um, let me see. Um, I think uh, Alex Field. So I was speaking Alex to Bill Camille from higher level. Uh -huh. I've seen him at a show back last year, and he was supposed to have a fight. And then he says today that uh, the same thing. I put up that the, the opponent had pulled out, and he says oh, that's he keeps getting that. You know, he's got fight matched, and they're pulling yeah. out. You know. Get a few weeks yeah. before the fight and they pull out. So, but every but guy you fought in the last three years is retired. I'll put it down no, to retirement. Out on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but or they yes. just or they just pull it or they just pull it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised they've heard the track record of the ones you've fought before. 
never fall again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, listen, we're, we're buzzing to see you. Buzzing to see you on the 19th. We, we always love seeing you. I mean, Nancy, whether it be grappling or MMA, just to have you there is absolutely brilliant. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I see you bring something different, not just the MMA, but obviously grappling, as I said, uh, I say just keep going and going and going. And you mentioned being 38. You certainly don't look 38 as soon as that door shuts and <laughs> the, the referee says go. Um, so it's going to be good. And as the great hairs, the, the great hairs are saying I'm 38, you know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 25. <laughs> Only 25. <laughs> um, so, yeah, listen, there you go, guys. We've got Fraser Hirsch. So, Fraser Hirsch is going to be um, up against Lee Emsley. So, it's going to be a grappling match, a 10 minute grappling match, submission only. Um, Evolution of Combat 11. So, that's next Saturday, 19th of February. Now, um, tickets again, we keep mentioning this, they're all sold out. Some fighters might still have some. Um, if they do, then obviously double check with your chosen fighter and the pay per view. Go on to the Evolution of Combat Facebook page, live MMA uh, is where the pay per view is going to be. Nine ninety nine for obviously a night of absolute fantastic combat sports action. So, um, so yeah, Fraser, we're looking forward to it. Um, I'll be there on the night as well, so I'll be able to get a chat with you. Um, as I say, I always love seeing you. Always love seeing you <laughs> and the family and the family coming through for this. Well, they were, they were for the fight. I don't know about the grappling match. And I'm hoping that they're still, <laughs> hoping that they're still going to come through. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like I say, there'll be a few folk coming through to watch us. Yeah, nah. We look forward to seeing the people coming through. So, uh, so yeah, listen, for me, thank you very much, Fraser. Uh, Katie, anything for you? No, just buzzing for the Battle of the Beards. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Fraser's beard's definitely better than Lee's. It's a uh, definitely better, much better beard. So uh, Fraser looks after his beard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Fraser, anybody you want to shout out to? Friends, family no, members? Just, just a big shout out to all my coaches. Um, George and Chris, Romy uh, from Results, my strength and conditioning coach, Carl. Um, my, pal, my training partner, Strength and conditioning training partner Lee's every morning five twenty. Me and him were up when we were away to the gym training and that, you know. So big shout out to him and just all the all, all the other guys up at the gym. The results between Forster and our Brof and the guys up at Origin, uh, Origin BJJ up Grant, BJJ coach up up, up in Dundee. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, listen, Fraser, I'll see you next Saturday. So yep. obviously train safe, buddy. Um, I would say stay away from COVID, but you've already had it, so... Yeah, can't um, catch it twice. Can't <laughs> catch it twice, apparently. That's what Joe well. Rogan says. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's why he's not on the UFC tonight. Yeah. Um, so, but no, listen, train safe, buddy, and I'll see you next Saturday, yeah, all right? see you next week. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yes, see you, Fraser. See ya.